Hello. So today I'm coming at you from my bed because I wanted to talk about some tips on how to optimize and maximize sleep, which I think is extremely important. And it is very top of mind because it was just New Year's. Happy New Year's. And my husband is Russian and New Year's is the holiday in Russia. So if you don't stay up until midnight and celebrate the new year with a huge bang, the rest of your year will be miserable. So I always am obligated to stay up until midnight on New Year's. Um, luckily this year, we didn't have too many places to go because it was COVID. So we just stayed in and I was able to get to bed by 12 15 instead of at least one or two o'clock which was excellent for me so anyway let's talk about the ways that you can get better sleep if this is something that you're suffering with so first one of the most helpful things that i use is a supplement with magnesium natural calm is the supplement that i personally use and it is probably the most popular uh, all you do is you take a little bit in a glass and um, mix it up at night. Drink it. It's a little bit tangy. It's pretty delicious. And um, you can get it in different flavors if you don't like just the regular kind. Um, but supplementing in general with magnesium has tons of benefits. It is known to help you fall asleep. It helps with digestion. It's known to help with stress and anxiety. It's great for muscle recovery. It regulates potassium, calcium, and sodium. It's great for heart health. It's good for your bones. And especially when pregnant, uh, it's great for constipation, which is definitely a problem for a lot of preggers. And even if you don't take it throughout your pregnancy, I think post-birth, it is a must to have on hand for that reason right after you pop out a baby, uh, your parts seem to be needing to get to work in a more optimal way. And it's if it's not regularly moving, then it's going to cause a lot of pain. So even if you don't take it during pregnancy, I definitely recommend to at least have it on hand for post-birth. The next thing that I think is really important is trying to get to bed at a reasonable time. So between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., almost everybody gets their best deep sleep. So I personally try to get into bed by 10 p.m. at the latest. 9.30 is ideal, although that usually doesn't happen. But as long as I'm in bed by 10, I usually am able to get an amazing amount of deep sleep. So I do recommend trying to get to bed on the earlier side. One thing that I use personally to track my sleep, and I think it's really useful if you're trying to optimize different parts of your sleep or you don't know what your ratio of deep sleep to REM sleep is. Um, I personally use the Aura Ring. It's a ring that you wear on your finger. It measures a lot of stuff. So it does measure how much REM sleep you're getting, how much deep sleep you're getting, light sleep. It also uh, will tell you body temperature, your HRV, um, and it gives you both a sleep score and a readiness score for the day. I've had this for a little bit over two years, and I don't really use it for those things so much anymore. But what I have found is most of my best sleep is between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. So if I have to get up in the middle of the night, which especially with a baby and now a toddler, every once in a while that does happen, or when you're pregnant or if you have to pee, um, if I'm able to get as much deep sleep as possible, it's much easier for me to get on with my day and function at top energy, at least if I get that deep sleep. If I'm woken up at 12 a.m. or 1 a.m., personally, at least I've found that my body just doesn't recover in the same way. Even if I can get back to sleep because I've been interrupted and I don't get as much deep sleep, I'm not as functional. So at least that's what happens for me. I know that's fairly common. So if you want to kind of optimize and, and figure out what works for you and what doesn't, um, I do recommend using the Aura Ring. It, it's a pretty great tool for, for health, rest, and recovery. 
Now, if you have trouble falling asleep, which could be for a number of reasons, um, I do have a list of things that I recommend. So aside from magnesium, which I've already mentioned, I would definitely recommend putting your devices down at least an hour before bed. So no TV, try to stay away from your phone, blue light in general, you can you know, go down a deep rabbit hole as far as uh, light bulbs and which lights to avoid. But ultimately, before bed, you really want to limit your your exposure to these bright lights. What's happening is when you're exposing yourself to them, your eyes think it's the sun. So it's not triggering melatonin to be created. Um, and in order to get good sleep, you need to have, be producing melatonin naturally. So Definitely try to do that. If for whatever reason you can't, you can also try to, uh, there are a number of different ways to make your phone more red or to get the blue light out of that. Uh, you can also purchase blue light blocking glasses. Some of them are definitely better than others for nighttime use. I would definitely recommend the ones that have like an orangey or a reddish tint to them. Um, and that'll block out a little bit more. Um, I also think it's useful to come up with a bedtime routine. So this could include a number of things that work for you. I personally, um, depending on the time and what my day is like the next day, sometimes I'll shower. I always do magnesium with my probiotic. I also usually get, um, that's when I usually drink my tea at night. So I get my red raspberry leaf tea. Um, I'll brush my teeth. I'll get, um, I'll heat up my, my cacao butter and, um, I'll do kind of like a belly massage. Sometimes I'll journal, you can read. Um, there are tons of different things, but having a bedtime routine to sort of wind yourself down, I find to be really helpful. Um, and it also allows you to get away from your phone if you're just used to scrolling on your phone in bed. Um, now, if you're too much in your head because you're either anxious or you're stressed or you just can't get out of your head, which does definitely happen to me often enough, um, I think that there are several resources that I find helpful, especially during pregnancy. So listen to something that gets your mind not thinking about your life, your problems, your stress, your fears, especially around birth if you have those, um, but something that's not really watching TV and just having another screen going. So um, one of the things that I do recommend is hypnobirthing. They do have, you know, a whole course. And if you buy the course, they send you the book and it comes with these relaxation uh, soundtracks. You don't necessarily have to take the course in order to do it, though. If you just buy the book online, you can just listen to them. You know, it, it gives you a CD or some downloadable resources. So they have like a rainbow relaxation. They have a birthing relaxation. They have birth affirmations. So those are things that sometimes I'll just, you know, put playing on the background on my phone for a little bit and then, uh, you know, set the timer to go off after, you know, 35 minutes or however long it usually takes me to, to fall asleep. I know Spotify also has some random birthing, uh, I'll say, uh, recordings. So, um, that, that can, you know, put you in a better headspace for trying to, um, especially get rid of the fears around birth if, if that's something you're dealing with. So that could be something that is good for relaxation. Um, there's another one I started to listen to because they gave out a free recording when COVID was all the rage. Uh, but it was, um, it's called Hypno Babies and that's specifically around anxiety. I'm sure they have other ones too. Um, but that one, I, you know, I listened to for a little bit. Anything that honestly gets your mind off of what you're doing, um, especially if, again, you have these fears around birth, though, you can sort of optimize that and listen to different, uh, be better things around birth so as to not listen to anything that's making you more fearful. Now, if that's not what you're into, one of the other things that I use 
often enough is a podcast called Sleep With Me. I'll, I'll link to all this stuff in, in the resources or in the notes section. Um, but it is specifically designed to be boring and make you fall asleep. And honestly, I am usually asleep within 15 minutes. Uh, so that's something that I definitely recommend. There are a couple others out there with the similar idea. That's the only one I've listened to. Uh, but I do recommend it for, for people that, you know, just need to get out of their heads. Now, let's just say you don't have a problem getting to sleep, but you do have a problem of either waking up to pee often throughout the day, throughout the night, or you wake up in the middle of the night. I mean, for whatever reason, my son gets me up all the time. Um, it's, it's rarer these days, but every once in a while, he definitely has me up. Um, I would say if, if peeing is the problem, you can try limiting beverages before bed. Obviously, I mentioned that I drink a lot of tea and magnesium and all that stuff. Um, if you want to do that still, but you do have this peeing problem, you could just, you know, try to drink that stuff earlier. Definitely make sure that you go to the bathroom before you go to bed. Um, everything that I mentioned above as far as the relaxations, if that doesn't work, Sometimes I find it really helpful to get out of bed for a little while and do something. Um, so I don't recommend looking at your phone again, because that blue light, if you start looking at this bright light, it's going to basically trigger your body to wake up because it thinks you're looking at the sun. So don't watch screens if you're trying to go back to sleep. Um, you could do light stretching, try to read with either, you know, red lights or just low light so you're not getting uh, your brain to wake up in the same way. Writing in a journal might be able to uh, be something that you can help. Um, anything that might get your mind off of whatever you're thinking about, I think is useful. And then try to go back to sleep. Two other things that I want to mention that I find pretty helpful are uh, first of all, nursing tank tops. There's not a lot of maternity clothes in general that I think um, are really useful after you have a baby, with the exception of maternity tank tops. They're great. They're super comfortable. It's just a tank top. In the winter, you can put a sweater over it. But at night, especially after you have your baby, um, there's going to be a lot, especially in the beginning, a lot of late night feedings. So this is usually if you're breastfeeding, especially, um, but just something that, you know, unclips, comes down. Uh, it's actually so helpful. So those are definitely, if you're going to buy anything maternity, definitely buy some tank tops. And then the last thing I mention, or I'd like to mention that has been really helpful to me is a pregnancy pillow. This big bulky thing. The first time I was pregnant, I was definitely not going to spend 30 or $50 or whatever they cost. I know they, they can cost probably up to a hundred dollars. Um, for me, that was not worth it. And I started to say, oh, I'm just going to put pillows underneath and I can show you some ways that you could potentially do that. Um, and then I started to have this really bad low back slash hip pain. Um, and I finally said, you know what, let me try it. I ordered one and it was amazing. It did do a lot to really help relieve that back pain. So if you are experiencing back pain and you're trying pillows and that doesn't help, it might be worth the investment. I pulled this out of my attic for when I got pregnant again, just because it has proved to be really helpful to me. Um, it is very big and very bulky though. So, uh, you know, the, the, the reason it's helpful is because you're able to kind of get underneath. It aligns your hips really well right here. It cracks. Um, and you're able to use this as a pillow. The other reason I find it really helpful is because if you're not if you really like sleeping on your back, which I personally do, when you're able to, you know, if you naturally go to your back often, um, hopefully you guys can see this with, with my cat just trying to steal some love right now. Um, it prevents you from going fully on your back, but at the same time, it still supports your back and allows you to kind of open up without going fully on your back. 
Um, the one downside is if you do like cuddling with your partner and he or she is behind you, um, it really increases the space and makes it so that's not as easy or convenient. It's up to you. Um, the other way, if you're not going to invest in a pregnancy pillow, you can also use, you know, just regular pillows. Sorry, bud. Um, to try to achieve the same thing. So, you know, play with different, different pillows, put them in between your legs. You can try to get one for your back support, although that's going to give you probably even more distance. Um, I would say probably elevating your knee so it's more elevated is probably the most important thing. So you could definitely try that first before you invest in the pregnancy pillow. Um, so that's it. So Hopefully this has given you a few different ideas on how to optimize your sleep. If you want more of these quick tips, please subscribe. These have actually been a lot longer than I've intended on them being. I am going to try, especially now that it's the new year, to maybe do, you know, a bi-weekly one and, and put a shorter one in the middle of the week. So if you subscribe, you'll get all the notifications and maybe they'll hopefully be a little bit quicker than the 10 to 15 minute range. Um, but that's it. Please like this. If there are any other comments that uh, you have or suggestions on ways that you have worked for you to optimize sleep during pregnancy, please share them. It'll be really helpful to anybody else who watches this. And that's it. Have a great rest of your day and cheers to 2021. Bye.